one, we want to introduce line integrals. Now, line integrals, we do something over a path in the xy plane with some given function f of xy. It could represent density. It could ultimately be a force. But we integrate over a path that's well-defined we'll call c. So there are three basic forms that a line integral can take on. We integrate with respect to x, with respect to y, or with respect to the arc length parameter. Now let's consider the function f of xy equals xy, and we're going to integrate, our path will be the quarter circle going from 6, 0 to 0, 6 of a circle of radius 6. So the easiest parameterization in this situation is to let x equal 6 cos t, y equals 6 sine t, and t will range from 0 to pi over 2. Now, we will need the derivatives in each case. So in the first case, if we said the dx, that's going to be negative 6 sine t dt. The dy will be 6 cos t dt. And the arc length parameter ds dt is the sum of the squares of the derivatives. So ds will be the square root of the sum of the squares here, which will be 36 sine squared t plus 36 cos squared t dt, which we realize is just 60 t. Now, using the parameterization we just came up with, this will give us the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 6 cos times 6 sine times negative 6 sine, or negative 216 cos t sine squared t dt. This one here, 6 cos, 6 sine, and then 6 cos, this will give us pi over 2 of positive 216 cos squared t sine t dt. And in the third case, 6 cos, 6 sine times 6, that will give us 216 cos t sine t. So you notice we get three different integrals, but they're probably very similar in nature. Now, in the first case, if we let our u be sine t, then du is cos t, so this is of the form u squared du. So my antiderivative will be negative 72 sine cubed t from 0 to pi over 2, which is simply negative 72. In this case here, if I let my u be the cosine, then the du is the negative of sine t, so this will be negative 72 cos cubed t from 0 to pi over 2, which we see will be positive 72. And in the last case, if I let my u be sine t, then my du is cos t. So this is of the form just u du. So the antiderivative here will be 108 sine squared t from 0 to pi over 2, or 108. Probably the most common type of problem we will look at is one where I have a dx and a dy in the integral at the same time. We're not used to seeing something like this, but in the form of the line integral, once I parameterize this and I get it into a function of one variable, it's fairly simple to evaluate. Our curve is going to be this portion from 1,1 1, 1 to 3,27. But this one here looks a little bit difficult to deal with, so I might want to rewrite this perhaps as y equals x cubed. Now the parameterization may be a little bit more obvious, I would choose to let x equal t, then y would be t cubed. Now, as a result, the dx would simply be 1 dt. The dy would be 3t squared dt. And because I chose x to be the t, I can clearly see that t will range from 1 to 3. So in rewriting the original integral, it will be the integral from 1 to 3 up x squared, y squared, dx, which is 1 dt, plus 2 times x cubed times y times dy, which is 3t squared, and the whole thing is integrated with respect to t. I only need to write that once. Now, if I check, that's t to the eighth power this will be 6 t to the 8th power, so my integral is 7 t to the 8th power. Fairly simple antiderivative at this point. And my final answer would be 15,309. And there you have the introduction to line integrals.